Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel, hope you're doing well. Today is the Q&A video. Uh, a few weeks ago when we surpassed 50,000 subscribers, I asked you all to send in your questions that I would try and answer. We've had quite a few come through. I've got quite a few to go through on Instagram and there's a load on Facebook as well. Not Facebook, that's a complete lie. YouTube. So I will try and go through as many as I can. Uh, so, starting with Christopher Richardson, 5652, how do you work out your selling prices, make sure you're always selling at a percentage margin, and have you ever had a vehicle sit on the forecourt for so long, depreciation has meant all slash most of your margin profit has disappeared, because the car has depreciated that much. Um, so two questions, how do you work out your selling prices? Well, I tend to just use Auto Trader, and then they will give me like a retail price, you usually do a percentage of that, but I'll have a look around as well and see if cars do seem to be selling a bit higher or if they seem to be set a bit lower um, and I base it off that really um, so then when it comes to working out how much margin you're going to make you need to know how much you want to make and make sure that you buy it so that you've got enough room to uh, to make that profit second have you ever had a vehicle sit on the forecourt for so long depreciation has meant all your profit has gone uh, yes I mean if you actually work it out um, the way that a lot of people will work it out as in like days on the forecourt if it costs you all of your overheads combined divided by how many cars you can stock say it's 50 for us i know it's about 20 quid per car per day to have it on the forecourt so if your potential profit margin is 1500 quid by the time you've reached whatever it is let's say 120 days you know that you're not making any profit after that point technically you still can never mind the depreciation but just the fact that it's been sat around for so long costs money um but have i had things that have really depreciated yes yeah, it happens. Things that sit around and need work, and in the meantime, they depreciate. I'm sure I've got a farm full of them at the moment, which is what I'm trying to address. Flipping Cars Repairs said, how did you start up? Well, uh, a lot of you may know I'm a plumber by trade, and um, yeah, I will go in and do a full video on this, but basically I uh, had a friend who was into cars. He kind of started hanging around when I had a unit and I was into motorbikes, and to be fair, Car selling was always like my fullback. I always I was one of those people who had it in my head that it'd be really easy. Like worst case scenario, if everything else goes tits up, I'll sell cars and it ends up. That's what I've ended up doing and actually just kind of stuck at the most. Uh, there's one here from a, hasn't really got a username, really enjoying the channel. What made you shift from flipping properties into the motor trade? Um, yeah, I mean, I don't really would say that I necessarily flipped properties as like an, a, an investor or a, you know developer or anything. Um, I just knew that it was, a good way to get up the property ladder was buy a whatever house you could afford that needed work, do it up while you lived in it, um, live in it for a couple of years, sell it, there's no capital gains tax, it's all tax-free money, and then go on to another one. Um, I think, why did I stop doing that? A, I hate living in a building site, so um, I don't want to buy a house and do it up and live around all the brick dust and everything while you're doing stuff. And secondly, it just, yeah, it takes a lot out of you. And I think everyone else out there wants to be a property developer, entrepreneur these days. So, you know, some of the real deals that you used to get just aren't really about, are they? Fool's Opinions has asked, how many customers ask for things to be done by you under warranty that they could easily do themselves of a spanner, etc.? Um, a lot of them, all of them, but that's fair enough. I guess they've, you know, they've paid for their warranty in a sense and they want to bring it to us. Not everyone wants to turn a spanner but there are some very simple things that people bring cars in for you know bulbs um, top up their washer fluid or, or whatever daft things but um, quite happy to help them out with, with silly things like that really taylor 40667 dream car no budget and a supercar you'd buy with a budget of two hundred thousand. this is where i'm not really like a super car guy i mean i, I do love cars but i'm not kind of like nerdy about it so um what would be my dream car um no budget i really don't know i know for me probably the most ideal car would be like a full fat range rover just something comfortable easy to drive still fast does everything you want it to um but yeah i do love supercars and things like that not that i've ever owned one but a supercar you buy with a budget of two hundred thousand. my friend actually has one a lamborghini huracan performante if you go on my instagram there's a video of him taking me for a spin in that and that's about £200,000 car, I guess. And it doesn't really seem like it should be £200,000. But yeah, just something like that. Just cool. If you're going to buy a supercar, get something larry and out there, I guess. Paul D7861 said, best profit from a car. 
and worst car in the last 18 months or loss. So best bit, first profit, best profit, sorry, I should say. I think probably the best one I ever had was I bought a Porsche Cayman S. It looked very nice, had stripes on it, nice wheels and everything. We sold it relatively quickly. And I think I probably had about four or five thousand pound margin in that, which, um, yeah, was was a lot. That's a lot for me. It's probably, we haven't, we've probably been close to that again. Um, but what's important about that one is it never came back. There was never any issues with it, which I can't say for a lot of Porsche products I've, I've sold or uh, a lot of cars where I've made big margins. They tend to have something that, you know, chips into that margin that you need to fix. That's just, you don't get those big margins unless you're selling stuff that's a bit risky, really. Another one from Christopher Richardson. What did you think of Yorkshire when you visited the car auctions on Viva Cas Vegas, Castleford, near Ponte Carlo, Pontefract? Uh, I love it. I, I wish it was next door. In fact, we were there this week and there'll be lots of videos coming out. Some of them you might have seen already by now. I don't know when all the schedule is going to go out, but yeah, I love it up in um, G3. It's such a modern, nice auction house compared to a lot of them. Um, yeah, nothing really bad to say. Uh, there's one here from Imalso Richard. Are any of the staff members related to you? No. I don't think anyone's related to me. Um, I think I'm trying to get my sister to come in and do bookkeeping for me, so that'd be someone who's related to me. But other than that, no. Uh, at Tim Gem Berens two four two has asked with how many cars slash budget did you start with and in what type of location? Any advice on people starting in the trade slash automotive sector? Um, I will do a full video on how I started out and whatever, but I would say I probably started with a budget of about twenty grand. Uh, from an industrial unit that was about 900 square foot and had parking for a few cars at the front. And if you kind of dotted them around the trading estate, you could get a few more. And the next stage I went from there was I found, just looked on Google Maps in the area around me and found there was someone that had like a bit of a an old warehouse and a bit of a field next to it. And there was a few cars dotted in there. So I just went and knocked on the door and said, could I... You know, it's a bit of a strange question, but I don't suppose you'd be open to me renting some parking spaces from you in your field. To which they said, yeah, they did that already. And I think I had 10 parking spaces for 200 quid. So that was the next step for me, which kind of really allowed me to hold more stock. But there was a lot of running to and from getting cars. Um, and then just kind of built it up and built it up. And any advice on people starting out in the automotive sector? Um, it's a big question, that. And I am planning on doing a video series giving my advice on starting out in the motor trade. Um, just baby steps. Just try it. Make sure it's something you definitely want to do. And, yeah, start out small and safe, I would say, if you're going to do car sales. Right. We've got one here from Josh55x67. He's put... Five or six questions. First one, does having all the staff slash overheads ever worry you financially? Very rarely. Not really. And it's a strange thing to say because it is a lot of money. It must be 30 grand a month. But we've built up to that. It's not just happened overnight. I know the money's coming in. And if we ever do have rough months where I'm losing, it might be 1,500 quid, a couple of grand you might lose on a month. Um, and you know, that doesn't worry me too much when I know we make good money in other months. It helps that a lot of it is, you know, self-funded. It's my own money. So worst case scenario, I can sell stuff off. I could pay people their wages, things like that. But obviously, you don't want to be getting into a, into a habit of doing that. Um, but yeah, luckily for me, it doesn't worry me too much. It doesn't worry me. Sometimes it upsets me when I look at the books. And I feel like the last three months, six months, we haven't performed as well as we wanted to, which is what's happened at the moment, which is why we're making some changes it upsets me. It gets me down, but it doesn't worry me because it's almost like the money factor of it. I'm detached from it. It's just funny enough. I was talking with Jamie of um, Car Key. We went and did a video of him. I don't know if that's out yet or not, but I related very much to him because I heard him say in a podcast once that he sees the whole th his business as like playing a game. You know, having a game on your phone where you build a dealership and you add on bits and you add on that, and the money in the account is just kind of like credits. You know that you spend. That's how I feel because there's no real tangible things I want to spend the money on. You know, I'm not into cars and fancy watches and things like that. Um, so, you know, losing the money is only like losing a few points in the game, and I feel like we could win it again. And yeah, if I was borrowed up to the hilt, then I probably would worry more but you've got to keep an eye on your your accounts and make sure you are doing what you expect to do 
Uh, he's put, do you think moving to just car sales would be less stressful than dealing with servicing, repairs, MOTs, etc.? Yes, that's why we're doing it. I certainly hope so. Do you have a realistic expectation for the next, say, five years for your business? Um, I'm not one of these goals guys. I'm not very good at doing that. But let's say if we do about £2 million worth of turnover at the moment, we sell maybe 25 cars a month. I'd love to do 50 cars a month and do £5 million of turnover. Ideally have like another site, a service site, or to have combined everything into one bigger site. Just go a bit bigger. Why would it really make me more money? I mean, hopefully it would, but more just because I just I just love the buzz of everything going on and there's always something happening. It keeps me interested. He's asked, do you have any other businesses that viewers slash subscribers wouldn't know about? Um, I'll probably mention it. I've got the plumbing business, um, which is very small, just one guy who works for me. And we've got a contract with the NHS, so we go around and test things and whatever. And that that's just, if it wasn't for that contract, I would have closed it down. But it keeps a guy in a job. He's a great guy. We do little bits and pieces. He might do boiler changes and things. And if I was ever to get back into property, it's very handy to have a plumber on board. Um, so there's that. I set kind of YouTube up as a separate thing now, just so it's separate from the business. So that that's not, you know, getting mixed up with each other. And yeah, that is it really. Those three things. Um, yeah, nothing else. Last question, what's been the best vehicle you've personally owned and do you have a realistic, achievable dream car? Well, the best car I probably ever owned was that 997 that I now own again, the 911, because I absolutely love it. And realistic, achievable dream car. Um, I'd love like maybe one of the newer V8 Vantages. Um, I, but I just, I'd love to have one, but um, I'd hate to see the money sat in them. I don't even know what they are now. Can you get one for 80 grand or something like that? I don't know. Might be 100 grand. I don't think I could ever put cash into that. Maybe I could finance one. If more of you watch the channel and get more subscribers, things like that, then, you know, maybe I'll I'll do it. I'll get one on a lease deal or something. But I just, I think I'd, just, I'd be excited for a couple of weeks and I'd be bored of it. That's just who I am. Michelle Toms has asked, tell us your worst customer experience ever. So many to choose from. Um, I say there's so many to choose from. Um, probably the one that I've spoken about before in podcast, the guy who bought a car off of us, turns out it didn't have a catalytic converter and it's been decatted. So we put one in for him before it went to him. We realized that the MOT sold it to him next year. He came back. I mean, he in between he'd come and told us he'd taken it, put a decat back on. He'd had it mapped to you know, drive it like an absolute idiot. And then so he lived just across the road from us. And then came back in for his MOT a year later. We put it through the MOT. It failed because it had no cat in it. And he tried to say that it was, I hadn't ever put a cat in it and that it was my responsibility now to put a cat back in it and whatever. And he was just an absolute arse. And one of his mates would come round, drive past the garage and gob off and it almost came to blows. Uh, um, yeah, so that's probably the worst one that I can remember. But you do get difficult people. It's retail. You're always going to get difficult people. Right, King Doner Kebab. Thank you. I always get in your comments and uh, see you always in the video. So I appreciate that. What, if any, YouTubers do you watch when you have free time? I don't watch a lot of uh, YouTube, so I don't really get time. Um, but if I do, then I do like watching Matt. I used to like watching Matt Armstrong for his things. He's quite a character, but he's so, so many videos have come out since I last had a chance to watch. I kind of lose interest because I can't follow it. I watch James at Chops Garage, catch up what he's up to, um, Dave at Car Dealer Pro, saying these guys, we've just been doing stuff together. Um, and I watch High Peak Autos as well. I do like his video, especially if he does something a bit different, like a garage tour or something like that, then I'll watch that. And I'll just watch random things, really. That's what YouTube's good for, isn't it? Right, I'm back. I ran out of space on my SD card, and I couldn't have another SD card because Toby's got all the filming gear, so I'm on a GoPro today. Uh, so I had to transfer some. So while well, we still got a bit of light, I'll try and whip through a few, couple more of these YouTube questions, then we'll get onto the Instagram ones. So, uh, Will Offer said, "Dream car, dream three car garage, please. Money, no object, but you have to live with them forever. One of them would have to be some kind of Range Rover, like a full fat Range Rover, maybe something capable for the winter and just a good everyday thing." Um, something crazy, you know, some kind of supercar, you know, maybe some kind of Aston Martin, 
something um, or a Lambo, maybe. And third car, what do you want? Um, maybe something like an Audi RS6 or a CC3. Do they still do a CC3 in, a, in an estate? I feel like I'd have an estate, an SUV, and a supercar. I think that, like I say, I'm not really, I, I mean, I love cars. I absolutely love them. And I have a stable full of them if I had the money, but I'm not uh, super technical when it comes to them, knowing which ones I'd like, but yeah, that would be a good combination, unless I'm missing something. But no, I think that'd be good. Uh, we've got a comment here from you is crap. Uh, it says, do you have to have mechanical knowledge to flip cars? And the answer is not really. Probably most dealers you speak to say they didn't start out with much knowledge. Um, just, yeah, just if you don't have any knowledge, then accept it and get help from someone else, get the cars checked by a garage or something along those lines. Don't just, you know, just guess and assume they're all okay. Uh, at cheese soup 796 I said, how many customers have you duped into buying a car from you? Uh, yes, nice one. Today's video is sponsored by CarWow. CarWow run daily car dealer auctions. And in fact, I bought a car from them myself recently. I was gonna do a full video on this. But I ended up selling this car so quickly that I didn't manage to get full details of it. We got some footage of us collecting it, um, but because we had a customer lined up and we were able to pick the stock that we wanted, we got it in really quickly and uh, were able to sell it straight away. So cut down on our advertising costs massively and it just worked really well for us. So if you are a car dealer and you're looking for somewhere to source stock, then I can highly recommend Car Wow Dealer Auctions. Make sure you check the link in the description. You can get yourself signed up and find yourself some great stock. All right, we might lose battery in a second as well. So let's have a look at our Instagram ones. Uh, Dodzy1278, what's the biggest loss you've ever had on a car? Oh, God. Um, did we cover this already? Um, probably. It's, I don't know. There's been a few where I've lost money. We're not crazy amounts of money. Picking the wrong business partner cost me about £14,000, if not more. Um, so... Yeah, the cars involved with that business partner. Will Offer has asked, favourite hot hatch? Good question. I don't even know what they make these days. Definitely not a Golf R. Controversial, but I'm not a massive fan of the Golf R. Maybe a Golf GTI. Um, I don't really know what many of the other modern ones are. Um, but yeah, Golf R I just find too clinical, just a bit too... It's, yeah, it's too good for its own good, really. Uh, Whitehead6543 says, who invented the skip? Your mam. Um, got one here from Chops Garage. He says, do you wish you had as good a hand pointing game as Chops? Naturally, um, no one else films their hand like this as well as James of Chops Garage. Uh, Min2334, which is David Min's. Are you happier dealing than plumbing? Yes, absolutely. Although we still get involved with the plumbing. And I don't mind it too much when I go out and do the odd job because I do emergency call outs. So I sometimes I'll end up in a hospital in a massive boiler room, you know, pressing buttons to fix things. But yeah, I didn't like being wedged under a bath or under a sink or, or whatever. You know, I'm not the smallest guy in the world. I probably was then, but um, yeah, I just didn't do anything for me. One thing I like about cars is if you've got, you know, dealing in cars, if you like cars, you can drive something different home. And even if it's a Kia Picanto that you got for 50 quid or whatever, not that, that happens, 500 quid. It's, you know, it's just something interesting and fun. You can't, like, get on a boiler and drive it home at the end of the day. So, yeah, I just, I get it. I just I like it for that reason. Shuttle85 says, does YouTube make you any profit or does it act more as a promotional tool? Yes, it does. Um, I, I do very well at it. I'm amazingly well out of it, to be quite honest with you, compared to what I would have expected. It's absolutely blown my expectations to the point where I think, um, you know, I'm probably doing as good, uh, if not better, some months than I am from car dealing. So maybe I should focus, uh, you know, my efforts more into the, the things that are paying. So I want to do more YouTube, good YouTube content, interesting stuff, as well as running the garage, but maybe run it as more of a, a slim, slimline thing, um, rather than trying to expand that and putting a lot of effort into getting extra work in here, there or everywhere. You know, I could just stick to my core business and do the YouTube and I'd have a, a great recipe for success, I think. Jake Barber 99 has says, do you use stocking loans? And if so, would you recommend them? Thanks. Uh, yes, I do. Um, 
I never used to, and up until the last couple of years, and only because they sort of then started offering them. And I'd heard a lot of other dealers saying, you know, it's a great way to expand, and that is very much what I wanted to do. And even when I did have them then, I tended not to use them very much. Um, I'd recommend them if you're already established, you've got a good recipe for uh, results, and then, you know, you just want to take things to the next level. Use them in a calculated way. If, for example, you borrow 10 grand and it costs it takes you say two months to sell it it might only cost you a couple hundred quid to borrow that 10 grand and on the sale you might make two and a half grand let's say a really good example two and a half grand is that 200 pounds you know if you didn't have the money you didn't use the stock in loan you might have missed out so in that sense it's great but if you're just starting out i mean they wouldn't give you a stock in loan if you're just starting out to be fair um but just just be sensible with it it's easy to get you know like a 100 grand stock in loan and instantly go out and buy you know, an Audi R8 or something that lands you in trouble and then you've got to pay it back and, you know, stick to sensible stuff. Use it sensibly. Uh, Scotsman62 says, well done on achieving over 50,000 subscribers. Thank you very much. It's all down to you guys. I really appreciate it. Sean8484, what is your favourite car to buy and sell? Yeah, it'd probably be something really boring, like a Ford Focus, because you can sell a Ford Focus 10 times over it and twice again on Sunday. It's just... just good forecourt fodder. Tuddy44, fave takeaway food. Fave car Barrow have bought ever and longest serving staff member. Dan's the longest serving staff member. He's been with me since day one, since we were in that unit. Um, uh, since certainly for me doing it on my own, he's been with me day one. He was with me when I was in a sort of semi partnership, which I'll get into one day um, with that idiot. And um, yeah, the other partner wouldn't pay him for his wages and I'd have to step in. And even though I was funding the majority of it, it's a bit of a nightmare. So I said to Dan, look, we're going to go on our own. I'm going to go on my own. Do you want to come with me? He did. He's been with me ever since. That must be like five or six years now. Um, Favourite car Barrow have ever bought? Um, Good question. Good question. There's been loads. It's, it's crazy to think how many cars we have bought and sold. You know, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds. Not thousands. Um, um, it would be so boring to just say that. 911 again some interesting Caymans in before. Um, probably one of them was a, a really nice Gen 3 Audi TT 2 litre TFSI DSG. Um, nice low mileage. It was just, just like it's such a nice car for us. That was such a really nice piece of stock. Sounded great, performed well, looked great. Um, so yeah, let's say, let's say that TT, I think. And favourite takeaway food. There's a place close to here called um, the Smokehouse Kitchen, and they do Mexican food, American food, stuff like that. That's my that's my weakness. That's my vice. I will get that of an evening. Sea uh, brought sixty three. Why have you still got the petrol pumps there, taking up all that space? Uh, because it probably cost me a fortune to remove them, and I don't own the site. Um, and yeah, I thought about oh, we probably just take them out ourselves, but then. You know, things have probably got to be vented properly and whatever, and you can't exactly just use an angle grinder cutting off pumps for a petrol pump, can you? Um, I mean, you could, but you'd probably end up in a thousand pieces all across Barrow. So, um, yeah, if it gets to the point where I end up buying the site that I'm in, then I'll probably get the contractors in, get them to look at it, and I'll get them removed. Um, Sam Extra 24-7, which is Sam Edge of G3 Auctions, has asked, what's your worst YouTube comment? Um... I don't like the ones where they're saying negative things about either my other half or members of staff, uh, just saying things that I just think is unkind. Um, I, people say a lot of things about me, you know, weight, size of my nostrils or whatever. It really is duck, water for duck's back. I honestly could not care. What bothers me more is when people call my character into question and say, obviously, you were ripping someone off or, you know, you've done something wrong there or whatever. Because I actually think I'm a really kind of... Um, upstanding when it comes to the business um we haven't got a good reputation and good reviews for no reason um but you've got to take you know you've got to take these things with a pinch of salt people are just sad unhappy with their own lives and i think that's why a lot of people um you know do these things online someone else has asked in here i saw it before actually i'll try and find who it was so i can give you your credit yes Eamon Connolly said, I recently um, turned into a bit of a fanboy. Thank you very much. How slash why did your YouTube uh, have so many trolls? 
I don't know. I wish I knew. Um, but I think I've never understood people being cruel online. I really don't get it. Um, saying just nasty, bitter, negative things. Um, just because it's something I wouldn't do. Uh, I'd rather not comment at all. But if I was going to be something positive, if I'm going to put something out there, I want to be positive. I don't really understand the people who, you know, do put negative things out there. I want to put other people down. Other than the fact that you've got to understand it comes from a place of like insecurity, um, bitterness and whatever. So usually when I see those sorts of comments, I just, you just got to think, oh, uh, they're saying more about themselves than they are about you when they're writing that comment. So, you know, don't worry about it too much. But when they do it about other people, it upsets me because they might not be quite as robust as I am about it. Um, so that, that bothers me a little bit, but I just, I think I'm just getting to a point now where I just start blocking people from the channel because it's not worth getting into an argument. Then, you know, they want to get a reaction. And, um, but it is when you're having a rough week and then you've got a lot of people commenting stuff and saying you're a, a rip off artist or, or whatever, then, um, yeah, it gets, it gets gets to you. It would do. Simon Godding um, has asked, favourite driving song? Don't really have one. I've got a very eclectic music taste. It could be anything from Frank Sinatra, um, Ray Charles to drum and bass or something. You know, I'll just listen, listen to anything, whatever I'm in the mood for. It could be a real mix, even some Nickelback. Don't judge me. Uh, Ryan Kenny 93 what's the future for Barrow? Um, world Domination. Um, no, I, uh, I think I want to make sure that we are doing what we're doing the best we can before we think about anything else, but I'd love to have, I don't know, something, something different. We need to either have a service center somewhere else and adapt the site we're in. I'd like to own the site that we're in, but I'd also like to take on another site. I think it'd be nice to have another site, but I think we need to get better at where we are. You know, there's no sense being ignorant about it. Need to nail things down a bit better where we are and how we're doing it before we start thinking about expanding. I was probably getting a bit carried away. And I think if some things have fallen into place, we could have got on with it, but we need to be nailing down the basics a bit better first. There's lots of comments here, actually, from Eamon Connolly. Um, so I'll try and do a couple of them. You seem to have loads of staff. Why so many? It's a genuine question, not trying to be cheeky. Well, because we were looking to expand and things were building and building, we needed new members of staff. And obviously we had the new buildings lined up and I was kind of employing people ready for that because I want to hit the ground running. As soon as we got those buildings, get the kit in there and start just going for it so that every, then everyone would have spaced out and I could have just kept going around making sure everyone was running at full capacity at what they were doing. But then we've hit a bit of a, you know, a stumbling block with that. And transport wise, you know, it hasn't, I feel like it could pick up if I really was focusing on it, but with how it is at the moment, um, it's just, there's just not a driving force in that. So, um, yeah, I mean, we are slimming down. So um, it's not for any reason other than, that, you know, I wanted to expand. I don't like letting people go. Um, but, yeah, it, things things are changing. He also asked, do you regret YouTube? Has it had any effects on your mental health? I don't regret it at all. I absolutely love it. I think it's brilliant. Um, yeah, it's brought me a load of opportunities, meeting people, doing things, being invited places. It's absolutely awesome. I can't knock it at all. Um, effects on the mental health? Yeah, probably, because I am someone who does, you know, um, has a, a long history of suffering with mental health, anxiety and depression and going away and going to the auction stuff. I just get anxious about things. That's just the type of person I am. It doesn't mean anything negative against me. I've learned ways to deal with it. Um, and when you... Sometimes you put a video out and you think it should be really good and it doesn't go well. You think, oh, that's, you know, it's disappointing or whatever. But, you know, it's very minor things. There are much bigger problems. Certainly not had any real long-standing effects or anything like that. There's one here from my other half that says, why are you the way that you are? And I'm sure we wish we all knew that. I'm not sure if that's meant to be meant in a nice way, to be honest. But, um interesting question really although she doesn't mean it to be she just means to be funny but um i don't know why i am i'm quite obviously quite a sort of driven and uh, a laser focused type person i think maybe a bit of adhd a bit of desire to prove to myself that i will do x y or z but i just um i guess is what happens when you know your business is your hobby at the same time you kind of get just suckered into it and i've got many areas of, you know, 
space to make improvements in my life, I'm sure. And taking my foot off the gas a little bit would probably be one of them. Uh, last question, uh, top petrol head. What percentage of your car sales are financed? And it's very small, actually, 5%. We don't do an awful lot of finance deals. I'd like to do more. We earn commission. Just that's, that's the crux of it. In fact, I've gone into that. Someone else asked. And I would, nice to credit them. Um, uh, yes, Sarah Kia. Right, I think my GoPro ran out of storage there. Um, I needed Toby there to help me with the technical things. But he's here now. So um, I think I was just getting into talking about the kind of uh, missold, the discretionary commission um scandal type thing is it a storm in a teacup or is it a real thing i think it's a real thing it's not going to be as big as ppi but it's going to be a pretty big thing but luckily for us we don't do that the discretionary commission type thing is where the dealer could set you a different rate than you, you might have been approved for a better rate and they'll put you on a worse rate because they get better commission out of it which clearly is not really that fair um so yeah who's going to pay for it probably the finance companies i would have thought because the car dealers or get money right back they're going to go out of business and then the finance companies wouldn't have people to sell their products for them so yeah it's it's certainly not a minor thing but that's that so i think i've waffled enough thank you so much for watching thank you so much for everyone who has subscribed and got us to fifty thousand subscribers i think we're actually on about 52 now uh, i will do another one of these q and a's at let's say a hundred thousand subscribers so if you have watched this far and you're not a subscriber strange choice but thank you anyway um, but definitely make sure you subscribe, like the video if you've enjoyed it. We've got absolutely tons of content coming out. We've got auction trips, visiting different dealers. Uh, God knows, I'm going to try and get a guide out this year for getting into car dealing and everything. So yeah, subscribe, like, it really helps out. It's blown my mind how fast this channel has picked up and how many people are enjoying it. It's really nice to have this sense of community. So thank you everyone who has, and I'll leave it there. I'll see you in the next video.